How well do you remember your fairy tales? There's a scene in Rapunzel where the father goes into the witch's garden to steal lettuce for his pregnant wife, and he gets caught. How I used to dread that moment as a child. I knew what was coming. He would be forced to pledge his baby to the witch. And in the story of Rumpelstiltskin, the nasty villain forces the young girl to pledge her future child to him in exchange for saving her life. She's been set the impossible task of spinning straw into gold. This motif of the stolen child is found in folk tales all over the world. It taps into our shared humanity and the common deep-seated fear of losing your child. Because we all know and understand that children are the most precious thing we have, both as individuals and as a community. Remember the Pied Piper of Hamelin leading all the children away? The ultimate punishment. From all over the world, people come to live in Switzerland for lots of different reasons. Uh, for a better life, for work, for love, and sometimes by chance. I'm one of those people, and many of us have our children here. And so Switzerland will be their home. They will have a Swiss education, speak Swiss languages and dialects, and enjoy Swiss traditions. And they'll adopt the Swiss way of life. And that's nice. It's not always without sacrifice for the parents, because they may have wished to bring up their children in their own culture. But such is life, you end up where you end up. How fortunate Switzerland is to have this gift. How fortunate for Switzerland that 30% of the babies born here every year are born to foreign parents. All those babies offered to the community. Where would we be without them? And yet, incredibly, this gift is squandered. On some levels, on an official level, it's not fully appreciated. These children are kept at arm's length from the day they're born, and they're labeled other, foreign. What a missed opportunity for everyone, for the child, for their parents, for Swiss society. And the idea is that these children can, if they choose to, at a later point, become Swiss through naturalization. So the door is not closed. But the issue with naturalization in Switzerland is that it has one of the strictest and most restrictive naturalization procedures in Europe both in terms of the conditions you have to meet before you apply and in terms of the procedure itself, which is lengthy and onerous and expensive and also, importantly, intimidating. So this is part of the reason that Switzerland has such a high foreign population at 25%. Now, to give you an idea of the mentality of the gatekeepers of Swiss citizenship, Take a look at this image. This uh, poster is from a 2004 campaign. Uh, it was a proposal that was rejected, um, and the proposal was, that people voted on, the proposal was to make naturalization easier for, for second-generation foreigners and automatic for third-generation foreigners. Now, when I see that poster, I mean, the message is that we, the Swiss, have something precious, and these other um, grasping people, unworthy people, want to take it from us. So all the value is placed on the Swissness that is being withheld, potentially withheld. And while most Swiss people dislike these posters, I have to say, and this particular party behind the posters, the Swiss People's Party, who produces um, art, um, pop art in this vein year after year on lots of different votes, and this poster has been used many times, um, 
so they don't necessarily like the style of the messaging, but voters do more or less accept the principle of restrictive naturalization. And the barriers to citizenship remain in place. Now, there are two types of procedure for naturalization. There's the ordinary procedure and the facilitated or simplified procedure. Um, I think they're both pretty, <laughs> pretty similar in a way. I've, I've been through the facilitated procedure and uh, it involved an interview as well. Um, and uh, I suppose the main issue with the quarter of the population who don't have citizenship is that crucially they don't have the vote. Um, and uh, that, to me, leaves a foreigner-shaped hole in the center of Swiss democracy. To give you an idea of the government's position on this, um, this is a quote from last year, from May 2021. So there are people who are trying to change the system, and there was a parliamentary motion uh, at that time uh, calling for um, simplified uh, or easier naturalization, um, which got nowhere. Um, so, so the government issued a sort of a one-page uh, summary of its position, and this is one of the things they said. Only those who are successfully integrated and present no danger to Switzerland should be granted Swiss uh, citizenship. Uh, so I think there's an, uh, an unfortunate emphasis on that, on danger. Why is the word danger there? Because um, the approach is we must at all costs keep out the bad apples. But unfortunately, what's happening is that you're deterring a lot of good apples. So this spirit of exclusion is self-perpetuating. Where does it come from? Well, it has a long history. But let's go back about 50 years, 51 years to be precise. Um, most people are really shocked to discover that Swiss women only got the vote in 1971. 1971, it has to be repeated. And um, one of the reasons that they had to wait so long for uh, the right to participate in the political process and also stand for election was because of the, di the direct democracy system, which is lauded and presented as this sort of unique and pure uh, version of democracy, but it has an inbuilt flaw that uh, there's a disincentive to actually open it up. Um, and so voters have more power than parliament and voters have to approve changes to the constitution, which was needed to give women the vote. Uh, so Swiss women were not going to get the vote until Swiss men gave it to them, which they eventually did in 1971. And in the same way, more voters, whether they be become voters through citizenship or some other path, which I think we were open to ideas, um, are not going to get that unless Swiss voters, the current Swiss voters, grant it to them. Um, so, um, I have a picture here of some women protesters from 1961. This is from the Basel State Archive, and uh, there, was, there had been a vote in 59, where, which was a no, 69% uh, no for, for female suffrage. So these women are marking that uh, two years later at a protest. And I do think it's sad when you look at it to think that perhaps some of the women in that picture never, never got to vote in their lives. Um, yes, so what, what we have here is, um, or what we're seeing now, is that many of, this, of the arguments that were used in the past to exclude women from democracy are being used today to exclude foreigners. And those arguments include, well, one of them is uh, that Swiss women didn't meet the definition of the word voting citizen, which was a masculine word in the Constitution. 
So it's good to see that the definition of citizen can change. And the other argument was that uh, was mental capacity, that women possibly didn't have the mental capacity to deal with the responsibility and the complications and it would be too much for them. So, you know, women were basically being told, don't worry your pretty little heads or your, your middle-aged not pretty heads about this, this is, this is our thing. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I feel that there's kind of a false perception today that anyone who hasn't gone through the naturalization process and, and, you know, taken all this trouble and proven themselves to be worthy, to become Swiss, that they actually are opting out. Um, but, but that view doesn't take account of the barriers that are there. And, and I do think the whole thing is harmful because the best, um, the best defense against rejection is indifference. So you have people saying, well, you know, if they don't want me in it, you know, why I don't want it either, you know, and, and that's a pity, you know, it's not good for social cohesion. And um, this last picture that I'm going to show you is one I took myself, and I'm quite pleased with it, those lovely summer colours of Switzerland and the, and the flag. So, uh, to dredge up uh, an old metaphor from the Second World War. Uh, at that time, um, it was said in a debate that Switzerland couldn't take any more refugees because the boat was full. And there were genuine fears of not being able to feed and house more people coming into the country because uh, it was so cut off. Um, and so what I would say today is that the boat is not full. You know, we can, we can fit a few more citizens onto that boat, please. Um, and I think that would be a good thing to recognize the Swissness and declassify some of these artificial foreigners that we have in Switzerland. So what I would like to maybe ask you today, now speaking as somebody who lost my vote through emigration, and I had to wait a long time and go through many bureaucratic hurdles to get a vote back again, I would say to you, if you have a vote, use it with generosity to expand and deepen and improve Swiss democracy. I feel that there was no need to be afraid 50 years ago uh, when women got the vote. Um, Switzerland is actually a much better country since then. And there's no need to be afraid today to let your neighbour and their children have their say in how our society is run. Thank you very much for listening. Mm -hmm.